today on X-Play. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's comic book games. Ready your utility belt. It's game time. How dare you strike the son of Odin. Sessler, Morgan Webb. Prepare to be reviewed. Prepare to be reviewed. This is X Play. 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 Hello and welcome to X Play. You may notice that I'm not Adam. I don't really pay attention to uh, that kind of thing, but. If it's sort of the thing you audience members care about, sure, go ahead, notice she's not Adam. I am, in fact, Blair Butler, comedian, comic book critic, and pan flute virtuoso. A lot of people don't know that about me. Blair is here in her capacity as a comic book nerd to help us take a look at the best, the worst, and the mediocre in comic book games. Yes, games such as X-Men Legends 2, finally letting you live your dream of becoming the Scarlet Witch and Hulk Ultimate Destruction, the first game to mix free roaming environments and gamma ray enhanced torso development, which is kind of hot. And later in the show, Superman Returns, which brings all the emotional conflict and not talking of Brian Singer's movie to the 360. But we begin in the realms of Marvel, where superheroes have interesting backstories. Galactus, you know, devours worlds, and the guy who talks to fish isn't named Aquaman. Here's our review of Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Meet the Alliance. Nobody's gonna mess with you now. Marvel Ultimate Alliance for the 360 dredges the depths of its near biblical comic history and emerges with a game that invites readers to suit up into something a little cooler than seedy spandex from the local costume shop. Is this the ferry to Staten Island? The doctor is in, and we'll see you die now. And the players have arrived. Doom seems to have more global domination plans than Karl Rove. The bad doctor is pairing up with Thor Nemesis and familial DNA counterpart Loki. I would find it most enjoyable if my dear brother Thor were to fall in battle. He'll just have to sidestep the Marvel Alliance. Alliance is a destructive dungeon crawler with some fairly interesting detail to backdrop our hero's feats of fury. Before you can open up your can of whoop ass, you'll have to deal with the fact that your normal heroic hive has been destroyed. So you'll have to temporarily relocate to Iron Man's skylacious bachelor pad. It's 40 stories of heaven on earth. Here you'll have to listen to a load of dreary drama, barked out by patent-esque Nick Fury. For more information, talk to the Black Widow. Choose your team and know that you have a considerable bench to pull from. Mix and match, or create the great groups of Marvel's past. Your foes are also well represented. Witness a level commanded by suspiciously monikered Arcade. I've got some killer events lined up! Perhaps those at Marvel once thought this gaming pastime a distraction to comics. Individual heroes' powers are impressively animated. Take Mr. Fantastic! See, stretch, go! Go, stretch, go! Aside from the internal plot overshadowing some of these characters' epic depth and some graphic unevenness, we loved it. A four out of five. Nobody is saying this is an amazing game. It can get very, very repetitive. But the simple joy of unlocking all those characters is wonderful. And any time I need to see Lockjaw in a game, you know I'm satisfied. Our next game keeps us in the Marvel Universe, but focuses on the alumni of a school for special young people, chosen because they never fit in anywhere else, seen as abominations by conventional society. Professor X's school has a lot in common with MIT that way. Here's our review of X-Men Legends 2. Oh, hello. I'm Patrick Stewart. You may know me from such films as Star Trek Insurrection and Jeffrey. I'm here to talk to you about an emotional, sensual, uncanny game. It's X-Men Legends 2, Rise of Apocalypse. Fully engage! No, it's not. It's for the consoles. You just like saying, engage. It's true, and I'm not ashamed of it. Engage! X-Men Legends 2 starts in the midst of a war on the island of Genosha. 
The bald blue man himself, Apocalypse, is pursuing his dream of complete global domination. Kind of like how Brett Ratner is pursuing his dream of train wrecking a successful movie franchise. Things are so dire that the bad kids have teamed out with good kids. Okay. Okay. Sure thing. I understand the wanton desire for power, but what's the deal with ex-villains and maniacal laughing? <laughs> <laughs> From the first moment of gameplay, X-Men Legends 2 is a mad dash to maximum damage a person and property. There are only a few conventional button mashing combat options, but not to worry. Soon the mutant powers show their strength. The mutant abilities are really the highlight of the entire game, and I hope you like leveling up, because you'll be doing it about every 10 seconds. <laughs> you can still tweak every gauntlet and critical hit percentage, but X-Men Legends 2 also gives you the option of automating these functions if all you want to do is turn off the old gray matter and break stuff. <laughs> From the time you turn on your console, you have access to a pantheon of 12 playable characters. Many of the new guys are Brotherhood alums, like Juggernaut, Magneto, and Toad. But by the time you get to the playable Scarlet Witch in a boss fight with Grizzly, it starts to feel like you're playing X-Men Legends Rise of the Obscure Characters No One Cares About. <laughs> but one new character stands above them all, Bishop. Seriously, could they not think of a better X-Man than Bishop? What is his mutant power anyway? Shooting a gun? On the multiplayer front, X-Men Legends 2 shines with the four-player co-op function, but the online play could do with a bit more evolving. X-Men is a franchise ripe for a great game, with the power of Apocalypse and 40 years of crazy storylines to mind. I'm from an alternate future. This one finally shows us what the merry mutants are made of. Pretty colors and horrible, horrible violence. Enjoy your nap, pal. Despite the inclusion of Sugar Man, <laughs> we give X-Men Legends 2 Rise of Apocalypse four Brett Ratners out of five. <laughs> Make it so. One of my favorite aspects of this game is the way it gives special bonuses for character groupings that reflect relationships between the characters. Like putting Scarlet Witch, Magneto, Professor X, and Juggernaut together gives you quicker health regeneration because they're all related in an extremely complex fashion I'm sure Blair could explain. Yes, and it's explaining complicated comic backstory like that which um, destroys all of my personal relationships. With great dorkdom comes great responsibility. It's true. Also, Xavier and Magneto, they aren't even related. Xavier is Juggernaut's stepbrother, and Magneto is the Scarlet Witch's dad. I'm you also You just got nerd all over my TV show. I'm sorry. Up next, Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction on X-Play. They love deflecting things with their bracelets. It's Morgan Webb and Blair Butler. Welcome back to X-Play. Blair Butler is here guest hosting Fred and Sessler, who is off in Spain fighting communists and crushing the spirits of imaginative young girls. Today's show is entirely dedicated to comic book games. Yes! Yes, and when I think comic books, I think radiation exposure. With the exception of intergalactic super beings and alien genetics, nothing has given us more superheroes than radiation exposure. As a teenager, I actually tried to get superpowers by exposing myself to high doses of radiation. What superpower did you get? Thyroid cancer. Speaking of growth hormone irregularities, here's our review of the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. Doc Bruce Banner, belted by gamma rays, turned into the Hulk, ain't he unglamour rays? It's ever loving Hulk, Hulk, Hulk. Marvel's most misunderstood mayhem muckraking monster makes up for his crappy movie with the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. And you know something? It ain't that bad. Who hasn't wanted to unleash their inner Hulk and Hulk smash through any town USA? Well, now you can. We wanted to congratulate Stan Lee on how surprisingly good the game is, but all our emails went unanswered and unsent. So we brought back the fifth best thing. Due to an absurd lack of interest, it's Roger, the Stan Lee experience. He's not Stan Lee, but an incredibly inaccurate simulation. Kids, please cover your ears. So Joe Cuba comes into my office and he's got pages for Fantastic Four 127. That's the one where Namor gets gonorrhea. He says, Stan, what do you think of these? 
And I look at him for a good long while and I say, this is And I pull my pants down and I take a big old crap all over the pages. And I say, now it's art. Get the out of my office. He was the greatest pencil of Marvel ever had. The storyline isn't something you'll want to bag and board, having to do with the Hulk's lame enemy, the Abomination. One thing the Hulk doesn't have is good villains. So I'm Jack Kirby's wife. And he walks in and we just look at each other. And that's how we came up with the idea for the Mole Man. Hulk's open-ended travels take him from secluded military bases to the big city. And oh, the ultimate destruction to be had. See a person? Throw a person. See a car? Make a nice pair of mittens out of it. See a bus? Well, you know. So one time, Ditko and Cubit and I were reading Iron Man number 53. We decide to have a few. And an hour later, where we smashed this Tony Stark. And who comes walking in the door but Jack Kirby. So we grabbed him and we threw him in the Marvel bullpen and we sodomized him with the toy web shooter. And that's how we came up with the idea for Dr. Octopus. The missions are pretty self-explanatory and not entirely original, but we like the side mission where the Green Goliath can actually get all noble on us by rescuing civilians in his own way, of course. Excelsior! That means DC's for douchebags. Enough said. Nice job, Dr. Banner. You've almost made us forget your crappy movie base game. The Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction gets four Hulk smashes out of five. Believe that, true believer. Believe that. Oh, thank heavens, they finally made a free-roaming superhero game that actually works. The way you can just tear through the landscape and devastate everything in your path gives you a sense of godlike power you've probably never experienced. Unless you regularly enjoy PCP, in which case it's really nothing to write home about. That's totally true. Mm -hmm. In a moment, my mind control helmet. Justice League Heroes on X-Play. In the still of night, at the scene of a crime, it's Blair Butler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. We have a replacement in for Adam today. Yes, he's gone back to his home world to learn more of its destruction and the origin of his own powers. I always thought they were symptoms. Not powers? No, not powers. Yeah. Okay, well, our next game is called Justice League Heroes, and it's about the Justice League of America, a fraternal organization founded to give DC superheroes an opportunity to uh, meet chicks and drink a lot. Yeah. And to give work to some of the more culturally diverse heroes. If it weren't for the Justice League, Black Vulcan might never have made it out of Harlem. Here's Justice League heroes. The Fantastic Four, Catwoman, Daredevil, and Supergirl. All examples that it's incredibly difficult to bring good versions of even the most popular comic book characters to life on the screen. It doesn't matter if it's DC or Marvel, eventually the best of intentions for even the most revered comic characters can go awry. And before you know it, pow! Nicolas Cage is playing Ghost Rider, and nobody's happy. But we'll have to wait to critique that game until after the film comes out. Right now, it's time to throw on our cowls, bulletproof bracelets, and magic green rings as we enter the world of DC and Justice League heroes for the PS2. Heads up. I see them. The game places the Justice League into its most dire challenge to date. At least that's what the opening cinema says. They've never faced a threat as dire as this one. As you might expect, the game involves a plot that brings the Justice League into conflict with various villains in the DC Universe, including Brainiac, Queen Bee, and Grodd, the world's smartest gorilla. I thought Amy from that movie Congo was the world's smartest gorilla. My mind control helmet. Now, well, sure, there are no Legion of Doom, but only the combined forces of the Justice League can stop this insidious plot. And they're all here. Batman, Superman, The Flash, Wonder Woman, Martian Manhunter, and of course, Zatanna, Mistress of Magic, who aside from having magic power seems to also possess the ability to make people who hear the character line up disappointed. Sorry, Batman, I got Jack. Get deeper into the game and you'll unlock a myriad of other Justice League members like Aquaman, The Huntress, Green Arrow, and Hawk Girl, which is awesome, except their presence isn't reflected in the cutscenes of the game, so it's basically like they're not really there. Sorry, Batman, I got Jack. Regardless, it must be great to have all those combined superpowers at your disposal, right? Not really. Most of the time, you'll find that every character's main superpower appears to be the ability to punch and kick with the same force as every other character. I mean, unless you activate his power, the Flash doesn't even run any faster than any other character. Look at it. He's just phoning it in. 
Don't expect a lot of help from your AI partner either. Nine times out of ten, they will stop attacking their chosen opponent in order to help you take on yours. Which means that much like Superman taking on Doomsday, you'll have to do most of the work yourself. When Superman died, four imposters emerged to take his place. They were okay, but far from perfect. This game is kind of like that. But if you're a fan of button mashing action games, repetitive combos, and superheroes with super punching and kicking abilities, you might think it's fun. Kind of. Justice League Heroes for the PS2 gets a three. My mind control helmet. Out of five. Okay, not a great game, no. but a game that reminds us of Hawk Girl's astounding emotional complexity. In many ways, she's not a Hawk Girl, but not yet a Hawk Woman. A trite Britney joke? That's your answer to the dilemma of a woman forced to choose between her planet and her friends? To wonder if the atheism she was raised with could be wrong? That's your answer? I was trying to avoid deeper hot girl backstory, but I guess I failed. Hello, you're with a nerd. Yeah. Moments away. Superman returns on X-Play. The fourth and ninth Marvel Girls, it's Blair Butler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to this special Comic Games episode of X-Play. Brian Singer did an impressive job of bringing the depth and humanity of the Marvel Universe to the first two X-Men films. And then Brett Ratner came in on X3 and turned it all to crap. Yeah. But this was all in service of a greater destiny, getting a Superman movie from the marijuana adult genius of Brian Singer. Unfortunately, the movie was boring because omnipotent people aren't interesting. And it's good to have the occasional action sequence in a superhero movie, but whatever. As for what we thought of the game, well, here's the review. Yo, Soup. Haven't seen you in a while. How you been? Expectations are high. Remember that epic next-gen-tastic cutscene a while back? At first glance, you seem to be attaining new heights. Anybody else smell kryptonite? Kryptonite! Superman Returns for the 360 begins with a classic Superman tribulation, an intergalactic air hanky. Here you'll hone your basic super skills, most notably flight and the Man of Steel's force-focused optic abilities. Sadly, this game's got none. The promise of that early cutscene is broken, folks. We got ourselves an airborne Aquaman. The title suffers on many levels. Sure, flying around is fun. Maybe it would have been better as a flight sim. The camera is incredibly frustrating. It will really urinate you off in close combat and in moments where time is of the essence. The controls are sloppy as well, almost demanding button mashing. Kevin Spacey crosses over as Lex Luthor. He wanders into cutscenes, squinting nefariously as he plots the downfall of Earth's blue bodyguard. There's no place for you anymore, Superman. Now fly! A lot of the villains you'll combat do emerge from Soup's past. Overcast and this guy. Has to mix your spit lick. Is that Welsh? I can fly faster than you can. As Superman levels up, you'll fight a lot of the same minions. Streets littered with contraptional robots is really popular, for example. You'll realize that the more moral than the man of metal is hardly careful. The streets become choked with smoking debris and powering citizens that you'll lamely have to reassure. Initially, the city has some charm that quickly dissipates with its extreme lack of interactivity. And this? What's this? Would a little ground cover have killed you guys? Weapons discharge only had to come close to register a hit. And level satisfaction achieves another outfit that looks like every other outfit. The biggest joke of all is delivered by our less than uber mensch's final adversary. Yes, it's a tornado. A fracking tornado, people. Get inside and start flailing. Oh, and be careful not to get killed by your own statue. <laughs> Soup, you are truly a dog. Perhaps we no longer even need Superman. A one out of five. So very craptacular. Yeah. And speaking of crap, let's buckle down for an intense X-Play replay session. Ooh, Marvel Ooh. Ultimate Alliance. It got a four out of five for quality action and loads of unlockable characters like Moon Knight. <laughs> X-Men Legends 2 got a four out of five for, you know, the exact same reasons. 
because it's nearly the same game. It really is. Mm -hmm. The Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction got a four out of five for letting you pick up and throw as many people as you damn well please. Justice League Heroes got a three out of five because it was boring. Sound of crickets. And Superman Returns got a one out of five because the last boss is a tornado. Yeah, what? Mm -hmm. And speaking of anticlimaxes, it's time for video viewer mail. Ooh. Hi, Adam and Morgan. My name is Ryan. I'm from Saugus, California. My question is this. I've got some gift cards left over from Christmas, and I'm looking to get a PC shooter. What do you think the best is out there right now? Half-Life 2 Episode 1 is still the best choice. It really is. It is, and Episode 2 is going to come out this year, so even though they're really, really short, you should get Episode 1 to be up on the whole story thing. Yeah, because story's important. Yeah. And if you're looking for best value, multiplayer, definitely the way to go, so definitely. maybe check out uh, Battlefield 2142. And that valuable information comes to you free daily from X-Play. We're cheap. Yeah, we are.